Hi, Terry Franks here. Welcome back to my channel, Prescott Voice. Please don't forget to hit those subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, today I'm going to dive into some pretty intense statements from Masab Usef, which is also known as the Green Prince. You've probably seen him in the news a lot lately. He's been interviewed by Dr. Phil, and he's just all over the internet. He was raised as a Palestinian by his father, who was one of the founding members of Hamas. It's not like he doesn't have background and credentials. He's got creds, he does. But the Palestinians and people that support Hamas are gonna call him a traitor, of course. So no matter what you think about him, he is very passionate, he's very bold in his statements. He recently appeared at a conference for the Jerusalem Post on June 4th, 2024. I think that what questions he asked the audience, rhetorical questions, threw these questions out there that everybody wants to know. What are the answers to these questions? He answered it unequivocally. I'm sure that this video is going to ruffle feathers. I just want to say ahead of time before I launch into this that I am a Christian, a born again believer in Jesus Christ. Therefore, I see everything through the lens of the Word of God, the Bible. You can say that I have a position that supports Israel completely. The Word of God for me is pretty clear. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. So God is very clear on the state of Israel. He has his eye on Israel constantly. He doesn't slumber, he doesn't sleep, he's watching Israel. With that said, you know where I stand. So here is what Masab Hassan Usef had to say at this conference. Keep in mind that he does have the history to say these things. So no matter what you think about him, I think we all need to really think about what he is saying here. So Masab really shook things up, I believe, at this conference by questioning the very definition of Palestine and what it means for Israel. So I am going to break down the key moments. So let's see what he had to say. He asked some really intriguing questions and I quote, what is Palestine? Is it an ethnic group, a religion? Does it have a distinct language? Does it have scripture? Are you a nation? Were you a country? End quote. These questions probably left the audience kind of thinking, where is he going with this? So he follows up with, quote, none of that. They have none of those things. Then he says, so what is Palestine? What is the purpose of Palestine? He said, he took a bold stance against the two state solution, arguing that it either aims for Israel's disappearance or misunderstands the existential threat it poses. He even suggested that the Palestinian Authority is a bigger threat than Hamas. He said, all this global chaos is managed by the PA, by the Palestinian Liberation Organization. He said, it's not Hamas propaganda. It's the ones who sit in Ramallah, he said, who pay all the advocates worldwide through their embassies. Those are the ones fighting against Israel and its legitimacy. Then he shared some personal experiences, and then he talked about a meeting with Yasser Arafat, the former PLO chairman, where Arafat gave his father, who was a founding member of Hamas, gave his father the authority to carry out bombings during the second intifada. I mean, that's pretty intense stuff. He is very, very bold and passionate about what he is saying. Youssef also didn't hold back on his views about the anti-Jewish ideology embedded in Islam. And we all know that it is absolutely true. He mentioned the quote, slaughter of Jews by the hands of the Muslims 
for approximately 14 centuries and criticized the Jewish people for being in denial about this historical reality. He pointed out that Israel acknowledging this fact would mean confronting a majority of Muslims. Musab also highlighted how deeply ingrained beliefs among Muslims, like Allah's hatred towards Jewish people, fuel anti-Israel propaganda across social media. There's no question that Islam hates the Jews. Quote, hundreds of millions of people out there want us dead, he stated. That's what he said. Those are his words. He emphasized the gravity of the situation. Usef then issued a grave warning. Quote, if we do not fight Islam, the world is in danger. We have a big problem, he said. We need to wake up. And if we keep ignoring and denying the existential threat, we will have to face it when it's too late, end quote. Usef proposed some thought-provoking solutions to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He suggested that Arabs should rule Arabs and even floated the idea of drafting Arabs into the IDF to oversee the West Bank. An interesting proposition. He also mentioned involving Egyptian and Jordanian intelligence in managing Palestinian affairs. Usef also believes in the importance of Holocaust education across the Arab world and stated that, quote, to be a victim and stay in victimhood is unacceptable, end quote. However, he did strongly warn against allowing the PA to govern a Palestinian state, predicting it would lead to Israel's downfall. Usef said it is too costly to institute a hostile Palestinian state. Quote, you cannot give them Judea, Samaria, the mountains, the valley, this is a defense line, he said. Usef also told the audience that the PA, the Palestinian Authority, comes from the same terrorism as Hamas or any other group that originated from the Muslim Brotherhood. He concluded with a powerful statement, quote, you give them East Jerusalem tomorrow and they will want West Jerusalem next. If you give them 1967 borders, they will say they want the whole thing, end quote. Can you just imagine what the audience was thinking after these statements? I don't know. It'd be interesting to have been there personally. I'm sure it sparked a few discussions for sure, but his bold questions and opinions will provoke a strong reaction, earning praise from some and outrage from others. Some may even label him as a traitor to his people, yet he says he loves his father and he loves the Palestinian people, which is why he is doing what he is doing. Regardless of what side you fall on, Hamas or Israel, it's undeniable that Mossab is a rare phenomenon in the Middle East, a truly exceptional individual amid the chaos and terrorism there. It's my personal opinion that God raised him up for such a time as this. It is my hope and my prayer that perhaps a ceasefire can happen, but Hamas keeps moving the goalposts. And can you really blame Israel? The only country in the Middle East that's a democracy and a beacon of freedom to live under the constant barrage of rocket fire from Hamas, constantly, constantly going, and, and more and more October 7th, let alone Lebanon and Iran, all the enemies that surround it. Clearly, the book of Ezekiel and Zechariah and all the prophecies in those books is coming to pass. It's laid out right there. I mean, they should read it and find out what God's going to do. He 
he will not allow his land to be divided to begin with. So the two-state solution, the dividing of the land, is against God's word. And he won't stand for it. No matter what you believe, whether you believe in the Bible or not, I believe God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar because that is exactly what's going to happen. Every single prophecy in the Word of God has come to pass. Do you think he's going to stop now? No, he's gonna fulfill them all. So stay tuned, I'll probably have more on this. I, I really believe that Masab is a voice that we need to at least consider and listen to because he, he sees both sides of the equation. Really a miracle actually for Israel worked with the Israelis for 10 years plus in Israeli counterintelligence. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem as the Bible directs us to do. And I really, I made a note of something that Jonathan Kahn said. If you haven't ever listened to him, it's, he's really interesting. He's, he's written all sorts of books, the Harbinger books and so on and so forth. Anyway, he said there's one capital in the world that the nations refuse to recognize, and that's the city of Jerusalem. But more than that, think about this. In its history, the history of the city of Jerusalem, how many have had, how many nations have had the city of Jerusalem as its capital? Can you guess? Only one, Israel. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, God is behind all of it. Leave me a comment, but be respectful, please. I'd love to chat with you or interact with you or engage with you, but be respectful. And know that I've heard both sides. I've heard it all. But you know where I stand. I stand on the Word of God. Thank you for watching.